Uh, well, it's exciting every year to come back. Uh, I thank Ken every time. It's, it seems like yesterday I was here as a high school football player at Rumble. I mean, some 15 years ago, um, getting a weekly award. So uh, it's always a blessing and, and exciting to come back and talk, especially about LSU and also Rumble. So um, what a weekend. Uh, you know, to be 10 years has flown by, and, uh, you know, people are to tell you all the time, enjoy it. And uh, 10 years to realize we just had a 10-year national championship reunion at LSU. Um, it was an incredible experience. Uh, I'm glad just on Tuesday, I just get, I'm just getting my voice back, um, you know, for the reunion and just cheering the game. Uh, it's one of those games where you just, you, you're in your seat, you're out of your seat the whole time. Um, it was great seeing former teammates. You know, a lot of guys, um, you create such a close bond with some of your teammates and bound on and off the field. That, uh, you know, we've stayed in touch, but there were a lot of guys you hadn't seen in 10 years. So it's, uh, it was great seeing those guys and uh, made you realize why it was such a special team. You know, you just kind of picked up where we left off and uh, so many great teammates and, uh, you know, held each other accountable and off the field. So uh, brought back some great memories. And then uh, also seeing Coach Miles, you know, seeing the excitement in his face, uh, holding up that crystal ball again. And, uh, you know, felt, it felt like yesterday we were in the Superdome uh, holding up that national championship trophy. So. Uh, it was exciting seeing him and hearing the crowd cheer for him. And uh, you know, just from the whole process, from walking down the hill, I mean, for the, for the people that have been there and seen the team walk down the hill, um, you know, and, and shaking friends and family's hands and, and fans, I've been able to do that as a former player with, with our national championship team, just kind of started that day off with a bang. And uh, going out for the, national, for the coin toss, you know, with, with Glenn Dorsey and Matt Flynn and Jacob Hester, and, uh, you know, we talked about it. let's stand just like we did when we walked out in 07. So it was just kind of a good feeling walking back out there, being in front of Tiger Stadium. And uh, the halftime, it's just kind of the, the production they put. And, uh, you know, I truly believe just kind of got the crowd fired up, you know, hearing that crowd cheer um, when they went down the lineup and, uh, you know, and, and called out Coach Miles' name. So uh, just an incredible experience, uh, you know, after 10 years. And it, it brought back a memory I like to share with people, and it goes back to the 07 uh, game against Florida. And uh, people always ask what it's like to be in there when 110,000 screaming and, and what does it sound like on the field? And uh, kind of a little um, little thing teams do, I'm sure a lot of the college do, is they, they have speakers when you play an away game. You know, so if you're playing an away game, the offense will have the speakers blaring, you know, during practice and kind of vice versa when it's a home game, the defense will have the speakers on. And uh, what they use to resemble crowd noise is it like a, a fighter jet taking off. So they'll just crank it up to max volume and you know, you got to use hand command, uh, hand signals, and, and you know, kind of work with the offense or defense. Um, I remember being out, we were playing Florida, and I, we were, I was in the A gap, uh, kind of bluffing a blitz. And Tebow kind of came up, and he was giving some commands, making it audible. And I was so close I could touch him, but I couldn't hear a word he was saying. And I just remember that moment being like, if I can't hear a word he was saying, I know for sure that guard tackle tight end ain't hearing anything either. So the chance of them getting the correct protection, getting the correct play, um, you know, was slim to none. So just kind of. That's the, that's the experience in Tiger Stadium, uh, which I definitely think in the second half helped Auburn, uh, helped LSU, you know, come back against Auburn. Um, talk about the game. Uh, how crazy, you know, we all remember the 2007 game when Matt Flynn throwing a touchdown to Demetrius at the end of the game. Uh, to 10 years later, had this, one of the largest comebacks against an SEC school, um, you know, in Tiger Stadium. So it's kind of just a tale of two different halves. Um, talk about the first half. You know, when you have 290 yards and 131 yards of rushing for Auburn, it's, it's hard as a defensive player uh, to get comfortable. You know, you got to make that offense one-dimensional. You know, and when they get out there and run the ball as a safety, you know, you're back 10, 12 yards deep. And, and when that running back's getting untouched into the second, third level, it makes your job that much harder. Uh, you know, so that was, I think, one of the huge key points in the first half was just not the ability to not stop the run. Um, you know, having that QB wildcat formation they were using, and just having the ability to the run pass read uh, made it tough on the defense. Um, and give credit to Coach Rana, going through the second half, holding them to 64 yards, 58 rushing, six passing. You know, when you can make that team one dimensional, kind of, it just gives you an opportunity to be successful. You can put pressure on the quarterback. Um, you know, you can, there's certain calls that you can, whether you can blitz and create pressure on, on the quarterback, and it helps your secondary. I, I, I'm not afraid to admit it when I seen the year, when you had Glenn Dorsey and Tyson Jackson. Marlon Favre, right? Kirsten Pittman, and Ricky Jean Francois. You can get these names. I mean, we saw these guys that had still a play in the NFL. And, uh, you know, it makes your job in the secondary that much easier. Um, you know, I like to talk about a few guys that, of players that stood out to me. Um, the first one being Devin White, number 40. Uh, this guy reminds me of Patrick Wills. 
just watch him. He was at Ole Miss and he was in San Francisco when we played him in Chicago. I just cover sideline to sideline. Um, he's a guy that just, he's a tackle machine. And, and, you know, you see him being the heart of that defense, and you know, he's showing up week after week with just consecutive total tackles. So um, Dante Jackson, another defensive guy. Um, it goes back to when you can make that offense one-dimensional. I mean, the amount of PBUs, you know, when he's in man coverage into the game, and uh, it's the hardest job on the field as a cornerback, in man coverage. You're chasing these receivers around all game long, and uh, he just continued to show up when the game was on the line. Um, third guy, DJ Chart. Just has continued to make plays. You know, as a receiver in the run game, and then on punt return. Uh, being a special teams guy at LSU and in Chicago, uh, I hold it close to my heart because I, I understand um, the hidden yardage on special teams, the momentum swings that you have on special teams. You can return a punt. When we were in Chicago and Devin Hester, we always felt like we were just one play away from turning the momentum in that game. So that was a huge play in the fourth quarter. And a guy who, um, who I'm, I'm really enjoying watching is number 83, Russell Gage. And uh, why I say he's a senior, he's, he's worked his tail off for three years, and he's making the most of his senior year, not just on offense. He's had some tremendous catches and runs, but he's another special teams guy that when you have guys who are offense defense starters and they want to show up and play on special teams on Saturday, it, it, it gives some momentum and just heart to your team. Uh, he's making plays on kickoff. He's making plays on punt. He's down to punt set inside the five. And it goes back to that hidden yardage. Um, for the offense defensive coaches, we all know how hard it is to have a 90-yard drive or – you know, when you're we're on defense and you come out off the kickoff and you got, they got a drive 90 on you, the chance of them being able to put a drive together and not make a mistake is, is slim. Um, so just those are the four guys I look forward to continue to watch each week. Uh, I'm excited about the Tigers and, and what's, uh, what's, what's coming up. And uh, I'd like to wish the best of luck to all the coaches up here as y'all continue all season. And uh, I miss it every day. Uh, you know, tell your players to enjoy it. There's nothing like playing on Saturdays in front of your fans. And uh, wish all the best of luck. Any questions? Craig, I know these former players are now in the media. Uh, Ryan Clark, mm -hmm. uh, Booger McFarland, and Marcus Spears. These guys are very vocal. These guys called out to current players. I know that kind of stuff stings. Do you feel like that those kind of things help in terms of it? Did it resonate with the current players in terms of maybe helping them turn things around a little bit? Yeah, I think they're uh, they're very objective, and you know some of the things they say are just facts. And uh, you know, so I think they do a good job of, of kind of um, you know pointing those things out. And you know, as as players on the season, you know, you know, you you hear the media, but you listen to your coaches. You know, you have uh, you watch film every Monday, and uh, you know you understand the mistakes you made, and, and kind of. You know, should be the young team as coaches. You just continue to. You want them to you know, not make the same mistakes each week. And uh, I feel as if LSU is continuing to get better and better each week. Craig, I know you always have confidence as a player, but honestly, after what you saw against Troy, did you expect the last two weeks to happen? I did. Uh, you know, to go into the swamp. I've been there. Uh, it's a tough place to play. Uh, at my first game at LSU, it was actually in the swamp and. Uh, wasn't a good one. So uh, I know how hard it is. It's a tough place to play. And, uh, but I mean, they've continued to rally together. You know, it's, it's one, you know, as Coach O says, one team, one heartbeat, and uh, they continue to believe in themselves. And, uh, you know, you just kind of worry about one game at a time, one play at a time, and just continue to build on what they've got. And uh, they've done a tremendous job the last two games. Yep. Thank you all so much. It's always a pleasure to come. <laughs>